Imagine being thousands of meters beneath the ocean surface, where sunlight disappears into total darkness. Yet somehow, submarines glide through that world in silence. But how do they survive down there? What keeps them from being crushed by the ocean's unforgiving grip? The answer lies in an incredible material, titanium. Today, we're diving into how submarines rely on it to survive the deep, right here on History of Simple Things. The answer, believe it or not, often comes down to a single extraordinary metal, titanium. Let's talk pressure for a moment. At sea level, we live under the weight of the atmosphere about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Not that you notice it, but that's what's constantly pushing down on you. Now for every 10 meters you dive underwater, the pressure increases by another atmosphere. So at just 1,000 meters deep, a submarine is dealing with pressures over 100 times that of the surface. So, if you're designing something to explore the deep, your materials have to be incredibly strong. Not just strong, they need to be lightweight, corrosion resistant, and able to handle constant stress without giving in. That's where titanium comes in. Titanium is kind of like the superhero of metals. It's got a strength to weight ratio that's hard to beat. It's as strong as steel, yet about 45% lighter. But that's not all. Titanium is naturally resistant to corrosion, even in salty seawater. That's a game changer. Most metals rust or degrade in marine environments. Steel corrodes, aluminum weakens, but titanium, it forms a thin oxide layer on its surface that protects it like a suit of armor. So when you're sending something miles beneath the ocean where help is nowhere in sight, reliability isn't a luxury. It's survival, and titanium makes that possible. Back in the Cold War era, both the United States and the Soviet Union were racing not just into space, but into the depths. In the 1960s and 70s, the Soviet Navy began building something truly revolutionary. Submarines made almost entirely of titanium. These were the Alpha-class submarines, sleek, fast, and incredibly deep diving. Thanks to titanium hulls, they could reach depths over 1,000 meters, far deeper than most Western submarines of the time. They were practically untouchable. They could dive fast, evade sonar detection more easily, and survive extreme underwater combat conditions. Of course, building a submarine out of titanium wasn't cheap or easy. Titanium is notoriously difficult to weld. It reacts easily with oxygen and other gases, so it has to be welded in a vacuum or under an inert gas atmosphere. That makes construction slow, expensive, and technically demanding. These submarines became engineering legends technological marvels hidden beneath the waves. Now you might be wondering, if titanium is so amazing, why aren't all submarines made from it? Well, one word, cost. Titanium is rare compared to other metals. Extracting and refining it is expensive and energy intensive. It's not something you can just mass produce on a tight budget. Most navies settle for high-grade steel alloys. They're cheaper, easier to work with, and while not as deep diving as titanium, they still do the job for standard missions. But when you need the best of the best, when you want to dive deeper, stay hidden longer, and survive the most hostile environments, that's when titanium earns its keep. Titanium isn't just for military submarines. It's a big deal in deep sea science too. Think of submersibles like the DSV Alvin, 
a manned deep ocean research vehicle that helped explore the Titanic wreck, or the Triton submersibles used in documentaries and deep sea filming. Some of their components, especially the pressure hulls, are made from titanium alloys. Why? Because scientists want to reach hydrothermal vents, study deep sea ecosystems, and take samples near the ocean floor, all without risking a catastrophic failure. They need to trust their vessel won't buckle under pressure. Again, titanium makes those daring missions possible. And then there's James Cameron. Remember his 2012 solo dive to the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean? His submersible, Deep Sea Challenger, relied on titanium components to help withstand the immense pressures more than 10,000 meters down. That's the power of this metal. It opens up an entire world that would otherwise remain unreachable. We're also exploring the idea of long-term undersea habitats or mobile ocean labs. If those ever become reality, their survival in the deep will probably rest on titanium shoulders. Here's what's fascinating. Titanium isn't just another material, it's a solution, a passport to the unexplored, a guardian against a world that was never meant for humans. It allows us to go deeper, stay longer, and come back alive. It's the reason we can explore sunken cities, study deep sea creatures that glow in the dark, and build stealth submarines that can vanish into the depths. The metal is invisible to most of us, but its impact is massive. So the next time you see a submarine in a movie silently gliding through the ocean's depths, or hear about an expedition reaching places no human has ever gone before, just remember, there's a good chance titanium is what's making that journey possible. It's not just metal, it's the quiet strength behind deep sea exploration. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.